um, I'm looking for the word uh, offshore activity offshore activities. Um, to get all these people and goods moving uh, around in the center and the heart of Europe, uh, we have a minister who is in charge of this uh, policy area of mobility and public works and different agencies, as I mentioned before. One of them is the Department of Mobility and Public Works, where I'm uh, situated. Uh, another one is the Flemish Waterway, where Patrick van Bokstal is situated. They are responsible for the inland waterways. Um, and then we have some other agencies responsible for the road works, for the cars. Um, we have uh, also a public transport company, uh, which are uh, responsible for the public transport, the buses and etc. The trains in Belgium are not regionalized, so the train network is managed by the federal government. Um, so what are we aiming at let's say in belgium or how is our mobility system organized um, we are heading towards sustainable transport of people uh, where a basic accessibility uh, is guaranteed so um, people should be able to get from point a to b whether they can drive a car or not and therefore a four layered transport model has been invented meaning that we have a, a train network uh, we have some uh, buses connecting major cities, let's say, or uh, major regions. Um, and then I'm not exactly what the third layer is about, but the fourth layer is really tailor-made, uh, giving you have a school somewhere or uh, uh, an industry uh, area. Um, because of their needs, maybe there will be uh, you know, an additional uh, bus line from that point to that point. And sometimes it can be public, but sometimes it is also uh, just asked to a private company to provide this link. Um, and then depending on who's the, the user, it can be paid either by the Flemish government or by this company who needs it. Um, we are also uh, really uh, investing a lot in a cycle highway network. So uh, we call it also the Pitzelstrade, which is Fitz is the bike, and Strade has something to do with the highway. So it's a, a bicycle highway uh, connecting the big cities. Uh, most of the time, it's just adjacent to the railway network, uh, where people can uh, go really fast. Uh, although it's also becoming dangerous, it's becoming crowded. A lot of uh, high-speed bicycles there, and so it also becomes a little bit dangerous sometimes there. Uh, and even traffic jams in these highways are. Uh, not where rare. Uh, we have public transport where co-modality modality is the word, um, which is a European word, meaning that you don't have to get on your modal and arriving with the same modal at the location you are you want to be. Uh, it can be maybe you start by walking, then you take a step uh, and you do it on your own. Uh, next, you take a bus, uh, which is um, together with other people, and in the end, maybe uh, uh, you uh, you meet a colleague and jointly in one car you arrive at your destination. So that's the the idea uh, we are uh, developing in Belgium to get people from A to B. And regarding uh, goods and freight transport, um, lorries or trucks have to pay for their uh, movements, and also we really want. Uh, to uh, have a lot of, and we want less trucks on our roads and, and have a lot of uh, traffic uh, or goods moved around to inland ships. Um, as I mentioned, we are in the center of Europe. Um, and so goods and uh, has to arrive in Europe. And therefore, we have some uh, main infrastructures. We have the ports. I already mentioned them, Port of Antwerp, Bruges, and North Sea ports and Ostend. We have uh, well, the biggest or the principal waterway in Belgium is the Albert Canal, which is going from east to west or west to east. It's more in the north. Uh, it's managed by the Flemish waterway. And um, so I have no idea, but a, a huge amount of our inland ship uh, tonnage is uh, passing on the Albert Canal. Uh, we have the we are involved with the project uh, project Sanderschelde, which is a connection north south from let's say Belgium to France, uh, 
we are doing a lot of works there, but especially the French uh, has a lot of works ahead. Uh, in total, they are or they are planning to build seven new inland shipping locks for ships up to 200 meter. Let's say it's uh, class uh, 5A, I think, and B. Uh, and uh, we are renovating or even constructing new locks uh, to make our ports more accessible or to have the second entrance if if one of the locks is out of business. Uh, recently, the Kieldrift lock, that's the one you've you've seen when we were stuck for two hours, uh, let's say, uh, in Belgium two years ago, then we were just adjacent to this Kieldrift lock. Uh, a new lock in the Netherlands is under construction. Uh, it's a joint venture between the Netherlands and, and Flanders between the Dutch and the Flanders. We have a new lock in Antwerp being constructed um, and we are scheduling or planning to build a new lock, an additional one in Zeebrugge uh, because they only have not, even the picture is in Zeebrugge. Uh, the port or the, the, the other port of Zeebrugge is only accessible through one of these big locks. So if this lock for some reason is out of business, then all ships are stuck. Um, so that are the big emphasis to Belgium. Uh, then also within Belgium, a lot of connection is generated. Uh, some examples here, I mentioned already the cycle highways, you know, missing links are constructed and optimization of the, rail, the road network is taking place. Uh, and also, although personally, I don't think they invest much enough, but um, there are of course investments in public transport um, and uh, it seems that we have in Belgium the longest tramway, uh, which is along our coast. It's, I don't know exactly, but it, our coast is 67 kilo kilometers. So, and there is in fact a tramway going all the way from north to south. So that meaning that we have more than 60 kilometers of tramway uh, in two ways. Uh, it's not only about infrastructure, it's only also about you know, getting uh, using this infrastructure in a smart way. So a lot of uh, emphasis is on uh, monitoring, collecting data, and using these data to inform people on the roads. Uh, use these camera to detect uh, people who are, who have not paid, uh, maybe their uh, uh, taxes. Um, also, uh, if a truck is too heavy, they can damage the infrastructure. These are, they are passed. You know, there, there are a lot of sensors on the road that can detect uh, inappropriate use of the roads. And uh, that uh, is also uh, an activity in our uh, policy domain. Uh, this this uh, sheet is focusing on, on uh, roads, uh, car roads and truck roads, but of course also uh, especially within the Flemish uh, waterway, uh, a lot of um, there's a lot of ambition now to to make it all more automatic uh, and to assist people more in a digital way uh, and to uh, control, let's say, infrastructure not locally but remotely from distance. Uh, and I think by 2032, um, some hard targets are set there to. Uh, manage it all more in a remote uh, way from distant and get all this data uh, more used and available for you know, people on this uh, network. Um, it's not only about structure, infrastructure and uh, data, it's also about ecology and uh, also maybe not fast enough, but once in a while you see uh, an electric uh, motorized uh, bus driving around in uh, Flanders um, and uh, so other it's not a, a lot of activities are ongoing to make it all more green uh, buses are uh, renewed uh, also in the ports uh, ships are uh, let's say uh, encouraged to get uh, to reduce their uh, exhaust um, and uh, you know, some of the other uh, things are mentioned here uh, to, yeah, um, maybe not really mitigating uh, climate change, but not making it worse or and worse. Or that's uh, the idea there. Um, this spreading with GPS, um, which is on the below this slide, 
Uh, I was wondering what it is about, but it means that uh, some of the buses are hybrid and um, depending on where they are, it automatically changes from electric engine to uh, diesel fuel. So it's um, kind of way to, to reduce the, uh, the, the emissions uh, in the cities. And once you are outside, it uh, goes back to diesel. Um, that's one of the projects they are uh, checking out. Um, then integrated water management more in our field. Um, some examples are here. Yeah, we are. We already have uh, flood warning systems, of course. And but we, we, on top of this infrastructure, we think it's interesting and and worthwhile to invest more in these kinds of systems, uh, so people can uh, be yeah, warned um, for floods and also for droughts and uh, water shortages. We we had them now three years in a row. Um, you don't have to see it coming for the next hour, but having uh, decision support systems that, that assist uh, us in uh, making good decisions uh, are really needed um, and on the development. But of course, already, we already have some support systems there. Uh, digital twin is a, is a word that uh, is a buzzword in this uh, here these days. Uh, and then concrete for the scaled estuary, the Sigma plan, you've probably heard already about it, which is a safety plan for the river scale, but also uh, you know, has ambitions or goals towards uh, nature development and towards uh, recreation or uh, even ex inland shipping accessibility. Um, and our polder was the uh, main you know, one of the, it's a second large area uh, given back to the river within the sigma plan so uh, this is not new but the management of the scaled history is not only done by flanders uh, because it flows in belgium and in the netherlands so it uh, there's a joint uh, management of this river by the dutch and the flemish uh, other uh, topics we work on within the integrated water management in flanders are the meuse river that's also a river which is not only in belgium it's it's uh, originates in France, it goes through the Walloon part to Flanders and then to the Netherlands. Also there, the different countries has uh, find or uh, you know, have, have find a way to, to work together on this river. Uh, we have a, a coastal safety master plan for the 67 of kilometers of coastline, where the slogan or the principle is software possible, which is beaches and nourishments and dunes, uh, but hard when necessary, uh, most of the time in the vicinity of a port. Um, and regarding this coastal protection, uh, there's a, let's say, a, a project ongoing where with all commun communalities, with, with different stakeholders, uh, we are discussing the options for 2,100 and beyond. Uh, giving a, a climb a sea level rise of maybe one meter or two meter. We are not saying we expect it to be two meter, but given it will be two meter, what are the options we have, and how can we gently uh, you know, go towards this future situation? It's uh, an interesting uh, project, but it's uh, also uh, you know, it it gives you the insight on on how a community can deal with these uh, challenges. Um, and uh, yeah, it's it's going to be a long process, but in a way, we still have some time. Uh, Patrick, do you want to have questions between you at the end? Uh, I would say at the end, uh, but I'm almost there. I'm almost there. <laughs> it wasn't. Um, <laughs> but so it's uh, yeah, regarding this coastal vision, it it will come up with some building blocks, and then uh, we will. Uh, it's it, the, the first action there is still raising awareness. Huh? All these people living up the coast are not always aware of uh, that they can stay there for, for many, 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 many years. Um, so, and also within the Flanders government, in especially in our policy domain, we have some know how and expertise, of course, on uh, managing a government, but also we have some um, really expert people, uh, technicians in the house. Huh? And, these technical experts uh, sometimes we can send them out uh, to the world and that is 
via an agency which is called Flanders International Technical Agency, which uh, can provide you. It's a kind of uh, you know, uh, outsourcing company uh, because sometimes the government has really specific expertise which cannot be found uh, in the private market. Uh, so if you think the, this expertise is within the Flanders uh, government, then you can contact FITA and then they can give you this expert for a good price. Um, and sometimes so we are involved in, for example, port developments worldwide and in Togo, that's one of the projects we as a lab were involved where a new key wall was uh, developed or planned. Um, the department. On the move, um, the department itself is responsible for uh, you know, uh, making uh, policies on mobility and road safety. Uh, we are investing in transport and port infrastructure. Um, and also these regional airports are, uh, let's say, uh, our cup of tea. Uh, our department is there from 2006. We have nine divisions and we are about 650 experts. Um, this is an organogram where we have a secretary general um, and nine divisions and three of these nine divisions are geotechnics, which you know are general technical support, uh, the one with the drones, uh, geotechnics is Greet and uh, the, sound, the CPT experts, and then we have Flanders Hydraulics Research. Um, briefly, I will mention some of the divisions in our department. Uh, we have a division responsible for applied mobility um, that has a lot to do with the roads and, and whether cars driving on our roads are safe, whether uh, the way we are examined to get our license, the driving license, whether this is uh, done in a good high quality way. Uh, so they are not really on the roads, but they are supporting that everybody who's using the roads are doing it with uh, in a proper way and uh, with safe material. Then we have uh, the colleagues of Maritime Access. Um, I'm going a bit quicker because otherwise uh, I'm going to run out of time. Well, they are um, not operating a port, but they are uh, building, renovating and managing port infrastructure uh, like these big locks. Uh, and it's also this uh, division. It's quite funny. Maritime Access is also responsible for the regional airports. Uh, so they are maritime and air access in a way. Um, so, but we as a lab are often working with them because they are also dredging the Schelde and other areas. So a lot of, there are a lot of challenges they have, we can provide them uh, with some knowledge there. Um, then uh, we have the more technical uh, divisions within the department, and sometimes we uh, group uh, these four ex technical divisions as under the name Experta, experts on the move. Um, four divisions within this Experta umbrella, and we have the general technical support division, um, which are the colleagues who were sometimes on the levy. Uh, doing topographic measurements, LIDAR scans, and also uh, taking pictures from a drone. Um, on top of these topographic uh, services, let's say, they also uh, assist us when we want to buy something. They have a lot of expertise in public procure procurement, sorry. And if we uh, get an offer of a company and we think, is this a good offer? They can also help us in evaluating whether uh, we are paying too much or whether it's a good price. We have the geotechnical division, those who are trying to understand what's underneath. Um, they do geotechnical research themselves, uh, trying to understand the behavior of the soil. Uh, and sometimes they also uh, do some design studies of certain constructions. Uh, for example, uh, parts of these blocks, maritime access will do. Uh, the geotechnical division, uh, have people who go on the field and do field tests. They have a, a really uh, well-equipped uh, geotechnical lab uh, where a lot of uh, strength and, and soil characteristic tests can take place. Um, like a, a river has a water level sensor, 
like a, a road uh, can have sensors on temperature and, and whether the truck who's driving on it is too heavy. Also in the soil, we can put a lot of sensors and these data is all managed by geotechnical division. And then with all this information, they can provide advice and do some engineering studies. Um, maybe also interesting to know is all this information uh, gathered from the Flanders subsoil is put into a database. It's called DOV, um, which is an, an open database if you want to know whether there is some information in, a, in the vicinity where you're interested in, then you can uh, go to this DOV Flanders subsoil database. Um, a fourth, no, a third division within this experta umbrella is expertise in concrete and steel constructions. These technical experts were not um, uh, just, uh, involved with Polish to seas. Uh, it was not about concrete and steel, uh, but uh, to make the story complete in experta, it's not only about soils, drones, and water. It's also about steel um, and concrete. And uh, yeah, they are really experts in these civil uh, constructions like locks, like bridges, like tunnels. Um, they can do the design themselves, but they also are assisting the maintenance, the management. Um, and if, uh, let's say, a first inspection has uh, seen something, then uh, you can call the A team or the experts, and then they, they go out in the field with special equipment, uh, and drillings, and other stuff to check the strength of the bridge or this uh, infrastructure. Um, they are also now uh, making a big step towards uh, asset management and, and get all this information from each inspection and from the design uh, plans all in one environment and uh, the software environment where all this information is managed is called iAsset, which is a, a, a market uh, tool which we are going to use here. Then finally, Flanders Hydraulics, uh, which is the division I'm in, um, which you know, I, I think you know us, eh? we are involved in, uh, uh, we, or we are trying to assist people like Patrick van Boxtel of the Flemish Waterway uh, with their uh, goals, you know, of, to, to, to reach their goals uh, on integrated water management. And we have experts in the field of hydraulics, sediment related and nautical aspects. Um, and hope we, uh, let's say, assist a little bit in keeping our ports and rivers uh, safe, ecological friendly and uh, accessible for everybody. Um, what you have to remember from us is uh, we are the ones who do these early flood warning uh, in Belgium. We, are, we have people, let's say, 24 seven uh, uh, working uh, and checking what the status is of the river. And all this information uh, can be found in real time on our website waterinfo.be through the Hydrological Information Center. Um, that's my story. Uh, are there questions? Then this is the moment. Uh, Patrick? Yeah, I think your uh, screen is still uh, on sharing with uh, in black, uh, black, blackish thing. I see your uh, your colleague was on the last uh, picture, so that's uh, very nice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so, so some, you could see maybe it's a picture from two years ago or so. Eh? But uh, I thought I will uh, give her. Uh, I will yeah. show her to all of you. So uh, give give her yeah, our regards. Yeah. I, I should say. Now, I was at a question about the the coastal protection. Are are you considering in uh, Belgium also building like say water islands before the coast? So so have a uh, for future sea level rise that you protect uh, the coast with a, a layer of, of water islands before it. Um, let's say it is considered as one of these building blocks uh, to move uh, instead of retreat, uh, moving towards the coast uh, to, to get more land. Uh, and um, in a way, building structures in sea, uh, but I'm explicitly not calling it islands, but having uh, 
areas, additional increasing the surface of Belgium uh, is one of the building blocks. Um, but why do I not mention Ireland explicitly? I, I was, but maybe Peter knows more about it, but there have been uh, people looking at an island at different locations. And the problem is in between two islands, you still have open water. And so it's not solving, just putting some islands is not doing the trick. Uh, but uh, having uh, uh, or moving towards the coast or to the sea uh, is uh, considered as, as a, a way to protect ourselves for the coming hundred or more years. I don't know, Peter, do you, is it correct what I'm saying on this island issue? Yeah, more or less. Uh, um, the idea of islands is still there, but just as a barrier against wave penetration towards the coast, uh, and, and whether these, these islands have to be underwater or above water, that's still a debate. But it's true that we, we don't want to call them islands because if they are islands, then they, they can also be inhabited. And, um, <clears throat> and, and, and then you put the problem elsewhere, of course. So that's not the idea. <laughs> then you need an additional island. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. <laughs> and you continue until you are in England. <laughs> now, so you, your option is building a dam towards England. That's the, the <laughs> <big> trick. <laughs> that's, that's a story somebody uh, already uh, invented, eh? building this levee in between Denmark and, and uh, UK. Eh? Uh, Robert, you're raising your hand. Yeah, I uh, had a question about your canals. I think one night, one night I woke up really early and had nothing to do, so I got lost looking at boat stuff on YouTube and saw this, this video about these canals that you can go from Belgium all the way to France and to the Mediterranean even, and there's these, you know, system of 26 locks that you can travel all this way with ships that barely fit in there. Um, do, do those get maintained and they're going to get maintained forever, or, or do you foresee them, you know, that's not a long-term uh, thing that will exist forever anymore. Um, I, I, you're referring to these locks uh, from the Napoleon area where they are 40 meters long and, and five or six meters wide. Yeah, it seems like, um, yeah, there's a lot of those, right? Let's say I, I, we, we, we do have uh, these locks and uh, some of them will not be enlarged, but where they are, uh, let's say, enlarged then new lock, uh is happy to uh, accept these smaller vessels and i i don't think the small locks will kept in uh, operation and maybe it, it will not be demolished uh, right away because maybe it's also in heritage uh, but they are not needed from uh, the mobility point of view anymore um, so maybe the locks will, will keep in place uh, but uh, okay I don't know, Patrick, is, there, is it correct what I'm saying regarding this, for example, on the Bovenschelde and Leia, where a lot of bigger locks are on the way or constructed, the smaller old ones, do they remain in operation? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I don't think so, but I'm not sure. Yeah. All right, thanks. So, Probably, if you really want to small <laughs> rounds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Little, I think you can stop recording. I have one last question, Patrick. Yeah, please. Um, is uh, and I know in the Netherlands that we. Uh, have a lot of problems to maintain the, 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 the infrastructure which has been laid down in the last 70 years, more or less. I thought from your presentation that you already has all have happening in Belgium also a lot of infrastructure. Is it also a political issue to that you have that in fact the, the, the politicians want to invest in, in new infrastructure while we have a huge problem in maintaining the existing uh, infrastructure, both on waterways, uh, airports, uh, rails, uh, motorways, waterways, uh, levees? I think it's it's a challenge. And I think Patrick van Boxel can, can uh, confirm on this to, to get the budget for maintenance eh? and, and for um, you know, keeping them, them they were the, because it's, it's more interesting for politicians to build new structures and 
Um, of course, we already, the Sigma plant, for example, it was decided 15 years ago, it's full of new infrastructure. So in a way, the, uh, Patrick van Box, our colleague, is asking for money to build new structures. And uh, at the same office, Patrick van Boxtal is asking the same money for maintenance. <laughs> uh, so it's also, uh, but what I do know is, and, and it's, I don't know whether it's because I'm now long, uh, I'm already almost 20 years uh, at this department in a way. Um, the recent years, I do see more um, interest or more, People are talking about maintenance, eh? and even the minister is saying uh, it's not only about new infrastructure. We also have to keep this infrastructure working, and it's not because we have convinced her just by telling her. It's it's also because a lot of constructions are end of life in a way, and uh, we don't have the money to build new ones uh, in the next twenty years. So we have to find, you know. Uh, cheaper solutions to get these uh, buildings in operation. And uh, so it's a necessity, not only to uh, build new infrastructure. And there is, I don't know, there is some interest within the politics uh, uh, and, and also the agencies of the Flemish Waterway, they are every year again uh, mentioning that it's important. Um, they even have a slogan on that, no? Is it, it's not a, do you know the slogan of, of uh, the Flemish waterway or of the mobility uh, policy that area on? In, in, in Dutch, it's uh, eerst houden, dan bouwen, uh, which means uh, first we have to keep what we have instead of uh, building new things. Yeah. But of course, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's a good goal, but uh, a lot of people still want to invest in new projects and uh, we need both but uh, the balance should be more in favor of maintaining what we have than in building new things that's my opinion and as patrick stated uh, there's a, a problem to have enough uh, budget for all that and that's why uh, politicians are now thinking about more projects uh, in DBFM, so design, build, finance, and maintain, which means that uh, the politicians are seeking for private investments uh, that we will have to buy back in several decades. Um, it's it's a solution, but it's it's a uh, it's uh, difficult because of course you put the weight on the next generation. Um, I guess that the same discussion also exists in other countries, um, but <laughs> I don't know where it will end. Uh, our national budget is uh, not really in a good health, uh, and the more you plan on those type of projects, the more you you uh, put uh, uh, um, pressure on uh, future generations so uh, it's it's a really difficult uh, discussion yeah okay thank you patrick for this uh, answer i see it's already after half past 11 so this meeting is coming gently to an end uh, any last questions no if not then uh, i thank you